Hello everyone and welcome back to Total War Rome 2. You may hear a little bit uh, more <laughs> like twinged my voice than usual. It's funny that most people don't complain about my voice but I get others that occasionally make a comment like that I'm intentionally doing something to my voice and they act like it's the worst thing ever. Um, there's nothing intentionally wrong going on with my voice but I do have some pretty bad allergies going on right now. I have it mostly under control at the moment and will do my best to commentate a battle. This one's going to be a 4v4 on the um, Unconquered Sun mod. This is Sub Commanders. If you would like to play battles like this in Rome 2, definitely check out the link in the description to the Gathering Stone, which is a Discord group that you can join, and you can choose to go and play these battles. It's a lot of fun. The rules are fairly easy to understand, and they're pretty happy to share them with you. Now, I'm going to slow it down for just a minute. We're going to have Lusitani coming up with some Celtiberian, or er, yeah, Cantabrian Cav not Celtiberian Cav, so we've got four Cantiberian, or sorry, yeah, Cantabrian Cav, and then we've got the Scutari Cavalry and a Scutari Cav General. So Lusitani as the Cavalry, it's an interesting one. Scutari Cav is just a medium melee Cav, um, but it looks like Numbers is going to be their play here. And then uh, we've got the Etruscan League here. Now anytime you see an Etruscan unit that's Volsky, it's going to have Scare um, as one of its abilities, so we've got some Volsky Spearmen here. And then Egypt has some Egyptian slingers up front, a Levi Thurio spear, which is lots of cheap javelins. And then behind that, there are some Nubian bows, which are cheap, shorter range bows. They are backed up by more Levi Thurio spears. Egyptian pikemen, so again, more cheap infantry to throw in there. The Etruscan League has some Volsky warriors. And it looks like some Lucanian ambushers, which this is going to be an interesting unit. I love the way they're holding that javelin kind of backwards at the moment, so I'm assuming this is going to be a dual purpose unit. Yeah, it does look like it is, um, and it looks like they have the ability to kind of hide along the battlefield. We do have an Italian noble infantry uh, for the general, a carrion axe general for the Egyptians. Rome is bringing the melee infantry. Looks like three units of legionaries. We have a Hastadi out on the flank, and then two legionary cohorts, or sorry, three legionary cohorts in the back. Um, so yeah, that's going to be six heavy infantry for Rome. And that's quite a lot in this game mode, along with the Hastati as well. Let's go check out the other side. We're going to have the Suebi. And it looks like the Suebi are player four, maybe? Yeah, player four, if I had to take my guess, because I see a little bit of everything there. Carthage is going to be player one, which is our melee infantry. We got mercenary Samnites, it looks like. Yeah, so three mercenary Samnites, a couple of Gallic warriors that I can see, and then a mercenary guard, which is... Very tanky unit here for Carthage. Gives them very nice staying power uh, in melee that they didn't have before for their general. That is not the Hannibal general, but it's just a battle rhythm general. But remember, all those abilities have been reworked uh, in this mod. So Pergamim is here, and they are going to be playing player two, which is our missiles and spears. They've got slingers up front and mercenary Syrian archers, which was an add to Pergamon. Um, and then there's a mercenary Rhodian slinger there as well. So Pergamon exercising some of their new units. They've also got Picked Peltist, which, if I remember right, I think maybe got like a mass increase or something um, to help make them a little more useful because they were a unique unit, but just very hard to use. I could be wrong about that upgrade, but I think it was something like that. And the Pergamene General is an Agima Spear, which is a, basically a heavier Thurios Spear. we got some Bloodsworn, Wodnaz Spear, that's a nice support unit. Kimbri Bowwomen back there, and then Parthia is going to be the Cavalry. And Parthia is always a solid choice for cavalry. We've got Noble Horse Archers and Sarmacian Horse Archers. So nice range for Parthia. And they've got Mercenary Sarmatian Lancers across the back and one Camel Spear. Let's go ahead and hit play. I would imagine that Parthia is going to have fairly good control of the uh, the cavalry fight. Uh, you know, kind of on the whole. But there are some Etruscan Horse Skirmishers here that got into it with the Germanic Scout Riders. And actually put them down there. So it was two to one. So a nice start here for the other team. Um, the range advantage certainly going to Parthia. But, you know, with crafty plays sometimes, I've seen, oh, those camels got in there very close. Very nicely done here by Parthia. They actually got some kills with those camels. It's like six, six kills. And they do have a scare effect. So this is dangerous for the horses around. They get caught in a bad position and the camels hit them. Camels are a little slower, and it seems like sometimes maybe a little bit slower to turn and accelerate, though I could be wrong on that. Maybe that's just what it feels like. And look at these Scutari Cav 
bouncing out of here. I do believe those units were hidden, at least earlier. Maybe not so much anymore. The Cantabrian Cav over here took the beating from the Horse Archers. Not terribly surprised, but the Camel Spearmen took a bit of a beating. Picked Peltus coming out to support. And then that uh, Noble Horse Archer here to support as well. Look at that. Cantabrian Cav going down to a hail of arrows there. And uh, just take a look here, I mean, with the Mercenary Rhodians and Syrians on the second line, I do believe Pergamim is going to have a pretty decisive missile advantage over the home team. And as far as melee goes, I mean, Carthage has some good units here with the Mercenary Guard and the Sam Knights, but I think I would give the edge to the Romans just in a one-on-one, -on -one. but they also have some Volsky warriors and other stuff here support from the player four, um, so I think there's a decent melee advantage potentially for the home team, uh, but I like the use of the Militia Hoplites here, that's a, a very heavy unit. It's not necessarily super heavy armor, but it's got good mass up front, it's a good stopper and kind of missile block. Um, we're gonna see here the uh, Rebellion ability that went into play, and that Rebellion, um, I'm trying to remember, yeah, melee attack. Uh, damage, stuff like that. And they did get into those Noble Horse Archers. It is just a Scutari Cav, though. It's it's going to be interesting here, because the Noble Horse Archers are really quite good in melee. They just don't have a bonus versus Cavalry, um, which the Scutari Cav do. But um, you can see here Parthia and its uh, support units here kind of mincing these guys up. And then meanwhile, those Etruscan Horse Skirmishers just beelining it for the Sarmatian Horse Archers, struggling to catch them. Yeah, they're not quite catching them, and so there's a lot of cavalry going down here for the home team, and this could be decisive. We'll see. Look at this. Pinched between the Riders of the Hunt and the Mercenary Sarmatian Lancers. The Volsky Spears using both Frenzy, and they have that Scare. A little bit of support here, though, from the Scutari Cab, but then that's going to get met by the Mercenary Samnite Warriors, who will make very short work of the medium cavalry if they stick around. Honestly, you know... Pretty good survivability there from the Volsky Spearmen, considering that they got completely sandwiched there between a couple of units. And look at this, Riders of the Hunt screaming back over here with the Frenzied Charge to connect with that Egyptian Slinger and get some extra damage done before it routes. That was actually a pretty clutch play, I think. A lot of Slingers going down there. And it was already probably kind of an uphill battle in terms of missiles. So I'm gonna be curious to see what else happens here. We got a Mercenary Leopard Warrior here that has come out to battle. This is against Gallic Warriors. And the Leopard Warriors are pretty capable in melee for a spear unit, especially. I don't know if they'll really stack up great against the Gallic Warriors, but um, I mean, they do have some pretty decent attack. For most spear units are pretty low. A lot of units piling in over here and not a ton of support for the home team. So looks like those uh, Volsky Spears did manage to escape, but these Leopard Warriors, I don't believe are gonna get the same dignity. They're going to be run down by these Militia Hoplites. They did a good job, though, against that Gallic Warrior. That was really quite impressive. They have 46 kills. Pretty pretty nicely done for the Leopard Warriors. Look at this aggressive work here behind the lines of Cantabrian Cap right up on the enemies. A Woden has Spear there to support, but that Mercenary Sarmatian Lancer is under some pretty heavy damage. There's a couple more Scutari Cav, one of them pretty beat up. So Parthia looks to have lost a good number of its Sarmatian Lancers. They had units hidden, because this Camel Cataphract was not visible earlier. That's a potentially extremely dangerous unit, especially if it's held for late in the game. We'll kind of see how Parthia continues to unfold that skirmish fight. Right now, only the cheaper Slingers, and I saw another Cambry Bowwomen. That's two Cambry Bowwomen at least. I think the skirmish advantage is going to be heavily in favor of the red team, depending on how it gets used. Right now, they're firing at the Roman infantry. Honestly, it's not a bad idea. Um, if the other team isn't having anything to pressure these Pergamene Slingers, the Slingers may not get a ton of kills, but what you can't see on any of the bars here, because it doesn't work this way in Rome 2, as it did in, say, Warhammer, or Troy, or, you know, Pharaoh, uh, there's a health bar behind the scenes, and these Romans are losing health. And ultimately, that's going to hurt them whenever they head into combat. Um, so this Roman unit here may already be combat ineffective, the sword fight, uh, because of all the damage done from these slingers. So the home team is going to need to answer those slingers. Uh, we're seeing here that they're going to go into the 
Testudo? That will certainly help. Um, it will certainly help, because it increases their block chance, essentially, if I remember right. But it's not a complete shield uh, against missile damage, so not really ideal for the Romans here to just sit here and take this and potentially lose that advantage. Now, let's see what's going on over here. The Samnite Warrior getting absolutely clobbered with fire here. So it looks like the home team kind of paying that one back. The Hastati took the charge of the Mercenary Gallic Warriors and another Samnite Warrior. And then over here, Thurio Spear and other units putting down a Mercenary uh, Gallic Warrior. And then a Samnite Warrior here uh, in a desperate fight, honestly, with this Volsky. And I'm assuming that there's some other support around. Look at that Leopard Warrior still going out of here. 123 kills. Man, rest in pepperonis to everybody who decided to fight these guys. That is an impressive showing on their part. Here comes some more push from Carthage, and it looks like it's all going to this flank. So Carthage is pushing hard in over here. And we'll see. Here comes some more skirmish power to bear. And it looks like it's focused on the Carrion Axe General of the Egyptians. That's going to be brutal. And should they choose to, they can mop up this Egyptian pikeman very quickly. Oof. Yeah, that Carrion Axe General is getting worked right now. So let's see how this fight unfolds here. Thurio Spear using a square to try and prolong this fight and leave the enemy units vulnerable to uh, skirmish fire. There's a lot of skirmish fire coming in, but a good bit of it is hitting the Thurio Spears. Um, so there is some friendly fire, but you know, all things considered, that it may not be a bad trade. The Italian Noble Infantry is in here as well. It does look like they're in formation attack because they are being a little bit weird here. They're going to use Presence here to improve recharge rate, and they've got Stand Firm which is going to be a really solid way for them to increase their their damage here. The Volsky Warriors. Yeah, they've, they've done well here. 91 kills. They're being chased off by a mercenary guard from Carthage, but I like the use of the skirmishers here in support of this fight. Carthage is just getting chewed to pieces over here, and then that's going to leave Rome to go after, honestly, comparatively, fairly squishy units other than this Camel Cataphract. So we'll see exactly how this plays out. The Camel Cataphract coming into support here. Gonna hit these Romans, and the Romans, I think, actually had their back turned to that fight, which kind of not what I would have expected there, but I'm pretty sure they did. They got hammered. That Bloodsworn's gonna turn around and fix the next legionary cohort. Yeah, that Camel Cataphract's already got 85 kills. Roman infantry could be in big trouble if they don't get some protection against that Camel Cataphract. This is an interesting one. Yeah, Carthage has exhausted a lot of its melee. I mean, not for nothing, but um, there's a lot of Roman troops left for Carthage to be in the kind of shape they are. So I'm curious to see how this plays out. I still think it's going to be close, though, because you got all these slingers and Pickpeltists and Syrians and Rhodians and Cambri bowwomen. Like, I don't know how easy the other side's going to be able to get at these units because they don't really have the cavalry. So the Roman infantry may look very strong here, but I got a feeling that they're going to end up just like this one right here, which is getting shot to bits in a crossfire here because they just don't control the maneuverability of the battlefield. And so it might be a little bit like Carre here, except without as many cataphracts. But here we go, those camel cataphracts coming in again, another trample charge, and they are rocketing up over 100 kills, maybe closer to 120. Got the Intimidate here, which is going to, I believe, prevent enemy ability use, if I remember right. Let's kind of zoom out and take a look here. Power bar still showing pretty even. Still got some Blood Sworn here. We still got a Wodenass Spear. Wodenass Spear is a capable infantry unit. Still got an Agima Spear, decent infantry unit. Not amazing, but decent. And there's still some Spear Levy back here. Picked Peltist will be a uh, pretty solid melee combatant after they spend all their ammunition and they don't, you know, they don't just get flattened on a charge or something like that. Still a little bit of Libyan infantry here fighting against the Carrion Axemen. That Italian noble infantry is absolutely owning. I'm not surprised. The Etruscans can do a ton of damage with that stand firm. I like the Etruscan guard in some of these fights, but the, the noble infantry is also pretty capable. Got these Egyptian pikes trying to push the enemy back, but they are going to be uh, missile fodder for the most part. A little bit of Roman infantry left, kind of falling back and maybe hoping 
for a better engagement. And let's see, that is going to be a big ability use there too. Yeah, that's going to be another one that's Intimidate, which is going to prevent ability use for a short while. Volsky Warriors charging in here against the Bloodsworn. I would think the Volsky Warriors would do pretty well in this fight. And indeed they are. I'm going to push that Bloodsworn back and come charging forward, though they won't want to go too far forward. I don't think yeah, Volskys aren't going to have a whole lot of armor. And so if they get deep back in here into all these skirmishers, they could get overwhelmed. They did get a lot of kills there, though. And continue to get a lot of kills. Their charge bonus is not bad. But look at this. Yeah, there comes the, the crossfire. Roman infantry and the Volsky spearmen holding back the Wodenaz spears. Again, Wodenaz spear is pretty tough for a spear unit. Not a real heavy unit, but they deal some pretty decent AP. And they have a solid charge because they're swavy. So those are units that you definitely have to respect. And it does look like this may come down to a late skirmisher fight. Potentially. Still got an Agima Spear in good health here. Uh, Legionary Cohorts, decent health between the two of them. Militia Hoplite. And then some Spear Levy over here. It looks like the Swaby General is down. Let's see the Roman and Etruscan General still around, as is the Carrion Axe General. So two generals on one side, three on the other. Sometimes that can make a difference, depending on the abilities and how they get used and everything. We've got a Levy Thurio Spears here helping to support this fight. Legionary Cohort's going to go ahead and clean up that Wodenaz Spear. Not terribly surprising, but like I said, the Wodenaz Spear, not a complete pushover. That unit's got 80 kills. Some Egyptian pikemen being used to pressure these skirmishers here. There's really not a lot of skirmishing left here on this side. Uh, there's uh, the ambusher unit, which, if they've spent their javelins, is really just going to be a melee unit at this point. You can see they've got a gladius drawn, and then uh, let's see these Egyptian slingers are still throwing. We've got Egyptian, or sorry, Nubian bows. It's like several units of those that still have ammunition. Nubian bows do have the 150 range, and it looks like they are targeting the Agima Spear General. Or at least, uh, yeah, yeah, they're targeting the Agima Spear General, who's chasing the uh, Ambusher unit here. And it looks like the Italian Noble Infantry nearby going up into a shield screen because they're being shot, I think, by these horse archers. This is indeed a close fight, but I, the power bar says it's starting to favor the home team. I'm kind of in agreement. These two Roman infantry units, um, when combined with those Volsky spears, it's going to be a bit of a problem unless this side just has a lot of ammunition left. There is an Egyptian pike here that's kind of turned around funny. It's going to get charged by a spear levy. And they'll try and get rid of that pikeman and will probably succeed. It's like that pick pelt is running away from the carrion axe general who's charging it. Honestly, they might do decent against that carrion axe general. They're not particularly effective in melee. They're going to turn around and take it. We'll see. Yeah, that general is not having the better of that at the moment. Here comes the Romans and that Italian noble infantry. They're going to be met by the Agima Spears and the noble horse archers there. I do believe the camel cataphracts are finished. And let's see what kind of ammunition we got left. So the Cambri bow women are pretty decent melee combatants as well. But I would imagine they want to spin their ammunition first, which is what they're doing. They're targeting that legionary cohort, and they want to target that bodyguard, as it's going to be potentially dangerous here to the Syrian archers. And then there's Rhodian slingers and Syrian archers here as well, but they're caught in combat against the Levi Thurio spears. It's not great. Here comes a ambusher unit that's going to catch these Syrian archers in combat. So again, not a great thing for the red team here, because those units, if they die with the ammunition, it's bad. And uh, just kind of depends on the situation. We'll see some of the Roman infantry starting to give way. Not a great situation for Rome, but there goes the Agima Spear General. That doesn't bode well for the Pergamene forces. They could chain route across the board here, depending on whether or not they hold the Discipline trait, which many of them do not. I think the Agima Spear does. But uh, we'll see. There is still a Levi Thurio Spear and another one there. And I can still see a Volsky Spearman and an Ambusher. This Ambusher has gotten a lot of kills, and it is cleaning house on these Syrian archers. Syrian archers have decent... or sorry, the uh, Slingers here. I think the Syrians may have retreated out of that. They did. It's like they are still trying to burn some of their ammunition, and that's, I think, a, a good idea. They do need to burn that ammo. 
Do the Nubian bows? They still have ammo, I think. The blue team may be sitting on some extra ammo here for the end in case they need it. Kimbri bow women still firing away. It looks like they're trying to put an end to that Levy Thurio Spears. They are under chase now. The Camel Cataphract is back here. It has six, six entities left. A little bit of a skirmish here. Kimbri bow women falling back. Syrian archer still firing. That's a lot of damage going into that bodyguard. So the Roman bodyguard almost down. This legionary cohort pushing. Here comes that Camel Cataphract, maybe looking for the quick kill. Syrian Archer is going to charge, and then the Camel Cataphract going to charge. That'll probably get rid of the Roman Legionary Cohort here. There's not many of them left. There is a picked Peltist here that's got 215 kills. It's uh, really doing a good job because it's up against a lot of these light units. That picked Peltist is absolutely owning right now. Nice to see them actually get some legendary use here because they're supposed to be kind of a really neat, unique unit, and this one definitely fulfilling true dual purpose. Here comes the Kimbri Bow Women. Looks like they're out of ammunition. And again, decent melee combatants when they get in here. There's flaming arrows coming in. This is a two-edged sword because it's going to hit both players. And whichever players have the worst morale at the moment may take the worst of it. Uh, it's an interesting idea to try and route things. This is going to be a very tight finish. That's a mercy and mercenary Syrian archer getting into the Nubian bows. The Syrian archer has some armor. And even a little bit of armor could make a difference here. That pick Peltus, though, they are absolutely tanking right now. Can they tank the Kimbri bow women? They only have 20 weapon damage, so not a very impressive spear damage we're going to see. Or sorry, they weren't fighting against them. They were fighting against the, uh, the units in blue there. My bad. Wow. Oh, yeah. No, this is over for the home team. I was misreading that for a moment. Let's pick Peltist. Yeah. Good grief. 266 kills. Sorry, I got confused there at the end, but leave it to me. I'm kind of in an allergy daze, so I'm not 100% surprised. Sol Invictus there, rolling his Etruscans. And uh, there were some cool units here. Those ambushers right here. That was an impressive performance by the ambushers. Did a good job. And some of these Volsky warriors did pretty well, too. For the Egyptians, a nice skirmish there. It went on for a long time considering just how strong the skirmish on the other side was. I think all things considered here, the Egyptian player did quite well. Gibbert here with the Romans, uh, I think probably had an advantage in a lot of ways, but then that missile advantage just negated it. I think the lack of cavalry support for the Romans left them a little too vulnerable here and made life difficult. Ninja Keeper had a tough job, though. He was up against the, the cavalry here of Marcus Decimus. And that was not going to be an easy thing. There's a lot of cavalry from Parthia, and Parthia's cavalry is, generally speaking, good. Um, so this was a tough situation to be in. Now, he did have the support of Sol with those extra Etruscan horse skirmishers, so roughly equal numbers of cavalry. But equal numbers doesn't always mean it's a done deal, and then especially when you add in that scout rider and riders of the hunt, that can be enough to kind of push that over the edge. Um, so interesting that uh, that bodyguard did do some decent work, but enough to push it. Let's take a look at the Lusitani here. Again, nice try with their cavalry. That, that was a tough job you're going to have up against Parthia. Number here with the Pergamines, and I love that that picked Peltist. I mean, that ended up just being a clutch pick, and then very nice kills on these expensive skirmishers, because they do cost a lot. They needed to get some kills. And then Mr. Bombastic here with Carthage, going into those fights early. Um, you know, it didn't get a ton of support in some of those fights. There was some. It was a little bit of mixed support, but I mean, it ended up just kind of burning out. Um, and honestly, both players had their infantry assault kind of burn out against the secondary support from each army. So it was, I think, a relatively similar result. Uh, and then Parthia, again, nice work with the cavalry. Um, decent number of kills with the horse archers, the noble horse archers, camel cataphracts. And then Vortigant Sauce here rolling it up with that swaby finish. Those Cambry bow women were in good shape. They got a ton of kills and ended up being some clutch units here. So very nice pick indeed. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I'll see you all soon with some more action in Total War Rome 2.